What's up guys? We are wrapping up the Crimson Dynamo wave with the Build-A-Figure Crimson Dynamo. So I'm not reviewing every figure in this wave. I'm not keeping every figure in this wave because this one's kind of a hit or miss one for me. But when I started getting pieces on this guy, I originally thought that I might not buy him or build him rather, but I couldn't stop once I got a few pieces because frankly, the size is fantastic. The look is great. And this thing turned out so much cooler than I expected. I do like this design for Crimson Dynamo. So this is the one from the limited series from almost 20 years ago. So I kind of had that going for me, but I wasn't sure if this is one that I needed on my shelf. But now that I have him, I can definitely say that, yes, this is one to build, even if you're not really all that into the character. So uh, let's see what this guy can do. Of course, there's no packaging here, so we're just going to jump right into it. And we've got a really, really well articulated figure. So this guy's head can go pretty far up, like to the point where if you kind of kick him back, he can do a flight pose almost where he's flying forward. So his head's actually looking correct. You've got really good down, really good tilt and then full rotation. There is an articulated neck, so that helps move everything around. These shoulder pads are articulated and they kind of help get out of the way when you move these arms. They do, of course, get in the way when you're moving forwards and backwards. And that's to be expected, nothing too crazy there. You've got a bicep swivel. We've got a single jointed uh, elbow, give you about 90 degrees, but it's pretty good for such chunky arms. We've got hinges and rotation at th these wrists. And then we've got a pretty wild diaphragm cut. So this thing goes side to side really well. He goes backwards, he goes forwards. I mean, he goes all the way around. It's got great, great movement, really smooth, no issues there. The legs on this guy are, of course, old and reused from the Mandroid Build-A-Figure, so they aren't the greatest. That's definitely one of the weaker areas for this figure. They only really go out about that far. They kick forward all the way. They do kick backwards a good bit. There is a thigh cut. This is your Build-A-Figure you know, joint there, so you might pop him out if you're twisting too much. Just watch out. He does have double jointed knees, but they only go back about that far. There's basically a little piece in here that actually stops it from going back ever so slightly more. And then you've got rotation, and then you've got a little bit of hinge, and you've got rocker uh, down there on those ankles. Surprisingly, the rocker is pretty good despite having such wide ankles. So he does move really well. I mean, for, for my money, it's all about this torso joint and the head and the neck. This is more of that slightly updated Marvel Legends articulation that we're seeing. And it's really cool to get something like this on such a big, beefy figure. As far as the overall look and feel on this guy, I'd say for the most part, they've actually got him down really well. Size on this guy is really well done, and I'll give you an idea uh, here shortly and what he looks like with a couple other Marvel Legends that kind of fit. But this guy looks really like he jumped right out of the page. Uh, I think they did a really good job of translating comic artwork into figure form. And again, I don't know if this guy has any real attachment to the Black Widow movie or if this design is going to be used, but I think it would look cool uh, in an MCU setting. So I think it's really nice that we got this particular version. There are a number of Crimson Dynamos. I'm curious why they decided with this particular one. I'm sure it might have something to do with the uh, legs that they reuse down here. And even though they aren't exact in terms of comic accuracy, they are pretty close. There is just a lot of stuff going on here. There's not a ton of paint on this figure, which isn't too crazy. It's a lot of molded plastic, so you've got like the pearlescent stuff going on for the thighs and then for uh, the torso And then of course you do a little paint here and then there is paint on the hands So he's got the the open uh, Slightly gripping hand and then you've got a fist over here on the right He's got what I think are one of my favorite aspects of this figure are these kind of like cartridges that are inside the wrist and they're They're translucent plastic, but they're kind of a glowy green color one of them over on this side is actually broken So they're not uh, they're not all the same So this one's got actually a little chip in it and it's sculpted in there, which is really cool I do like the fact that the shoulder pads move so it helps again to aid with articulation But it, it just makes him look a little better when you've got him in certain poses to help hide things a little bit You do have the uh, like the reactor in his chest uh, glowing that orange color and then you've also got the backside of it with the the engine the thruster doing some of the same this is actually a separate piece you have to pop this on uh, when you put them together but this thing just has a tremendous size and a great scale it's got a little asymmetry going on with the uh, like the exhaust ports over here or whatever these are supposed to be I don't remember coming out of this particular side the head is incredibly imposing looks really good sized very nicely you've got that bright orange visor in there and a almost skull looking mouth it kind of gives you a Punisher vibe almost with the with the three lines and then that very angular look but it's it's really nicely done like i said previously i didn't really think i needed to build this guy but after having him in hand and seeing what he looks like completed i can't imagine not having this one it's a great great build a figure maybe a little bit off the beaten path 
but he looks fantastic and they did a really good job with the sculpt with all the little details like the kind of cracking pattern that's in the in the pads here they did a great job it's a really cool looking figure and then to give you an idea of just how big this guy is, here he is with a a couple of, I guess, appropriate Marvel Legends as far as things that could sort of go alongside him. So some other Russian things. We've got our Red Guardian, so, you know, a larger style, normal Marvel Legends figure. And then we've got our recent white Black Widow, so a, a, a standard normal uh, female figure. So you can see that this guy just towers over most figures in a general sense. Uh, he is a tremendously large build of figure. I mean, the size is not lost on this guy. They've really, they've really made this guy have a tremendous shelf presence, and you can, you can see that he scales really well with a lot of other stuff from the line. So, yeah, if you can't tell, I really like this Build-A-Figure. I'm still kind of surprised that we got this guy, and I'm not sure what specifically made them go with this particular design, but I think it works. I really like a lot of these more, you know, uh, kind of Winter Guard-style characters that we're getting, which he do he isn't necessarily one of them, this particular one, but there's a lot of cool Winter Guard figures we could be getting, like Ursa Major or Darkstar or Chernabog or all kinds of those crazy ones. So this guy might be going down the right path for me if we can get some of the more uh, kind of weird characters out of that uh, that arena when it comes to Marvel stuff. But this figure in particular is really well done. He moves great. Sculpt is fantastic. He just looks the part and he's a big imposing build a figure that's going to look fantastic on your shelf. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Crimson Dynamo build a figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.